Hello and welcome to the third rail. We have a few new additions to the collection this week. I just received this little BR111 and a set comprising of another BR111 and a few coaches. Both models appeared in the 1986-87 Märklin catalogue. The locomotive could be found on page 23 of the catalogue and has the model number 3172. And the set is a 2859, which is briefly mentioned on page 48 of the catalogue. As far as the prototype is concerned, both models are based on consists that were used to present experimental liveries to the board of the Deutsche Bundesbahn in 1985. Until that time, the liveries in use within the Deutsche Bundesbahn were more a product of a choice of paint made because of its ability to prevent rust and repel dirt. This utilitarian approach was carried over from the Deutsche Reichsbahn, on the remains of which the Deutsche Bundesbahn was created. So, colors were simply taken over, so that's black for steam, green for electric, green for passenger coaches, with an exception for some dining cars which were red, and rail buses which were red. The red livery was also applied to diesels, as these were introduced a bit later on, and a blue livery was applied to first-class passenger cars. When electric locomotives became a bit faster, a uh, blue livery was applied to those reaching speeds of over 120 km an hour. So all pretty utilitarian and more an internal classification tool than a marketing tool. There were a few exceptions, however, such as the TEE livery, with, which was chosen by a consortium of companies operating the product. The Deutsche Bundesbahn simply took the livery over and applied it to its stock. By the end of the 60s, it was decided that the liveries needed freshening up a bit, so a design center was created in the company's Munich offices. The office set off to work on various products and soon came up with a pop color scheme for fast or express trains. The livery would be applied on cars based on their utilization or class of travel. The experiment was very short-lived and quickly withdrawn based on customer feedback and operational considerations. It was followed by a so-called unified color scheme in the early 70s, I think 1974, where basically everything that was a bit fast was repainted in a lovely beige and blue ocean livery. This color scheme was certainly very unified, but to this date it uh, divides the opinions between the haters and the people who absolutely love the scheme. Which brings us to our prototypes. All the liveries I described were usually deployed as part of the standard maintenance cycle. As a result, by the beginning of the 80s, there was a patchwork of all sorts of liveries operating on the Deutsche Bundesbahn network. A few changes were profiling themselves in the horizon. The arrival of high-speed services in the shape of the ICE, an increased competition from other means of transport meant that the Deutsche Bundesbahn needed to differentiate itself from its competition and introduce a more product-oriented approach in their marketing. The board engaged in a rebranding project and commissioned two studies, one from an external design office and another one from its internal design centre in Munich. The result of these studies was presented to the board in the newly opened station of Hockenheim in September 1985. 
Merklin was ready on time for the presentation with a series of items that reflected the result of the studies. Unfortunately for Merklin, the Bundesbahn board did not come to a decision at the time. A lack of decision is never good, especially in terms of design. That means that something will change. And I'm pretty sure Merklin knew that based on the way they marketed the product. Nevertheless, it looks like they gave the internal Deutsche Bahn study a better chance of making it to a further stage than the internal study. They introduced the Deutsche Bahn study as part of the general offering and they introduced a private study as part of a box set which was packaged with a VHS tape to try and entice people to buy it. Not really great marketing and also the quality of the model is the lowest that Merklin had to offer at the time. The marketing was so bad that a lot of people, yours truly included, actually think that the set is only a collection of the items present in the general product offering in the catalogue, but in fact they are very much different. If we compare the livery of the locomotives, we can see distinct colour scheme differences, and the carriages are also based on a completely different colour palettes. Sorry for the arrangement in the wrong order on the picture. So time to have a very quick look at the model. Uh, the locomotive first, it arrived in its original box, which doesn't look bad at all. A few scratches here and there, but nothing really worth mentioning. Let's try and uh, get the locomotive out of its tray. Uh, I'm, uh, it's been put in back upside down. Anyway, doesn't really matter. Let's take this uh, little thing out of its box. The uh, plastic, plastic tray looks intact. The seller put some reinforcement in the shape of newspapers on each side, which is good, because this plastic gets brittle after 30 years. Come on, let's get the thing out. So, here is the model. The paperwork is included and complete. That's good. And we are going to take the locomotive out of its protective tray and put it on its presentation rail to have a closer look. And there we are. It's all pretty uneventful. Everything's there, no paint breaches, etc. I'm not really interested in that model, to be honest. I'm just plugging a gap in the collection. However, there's a particularity with this model, is that Merklin made a mistake when producing it. If we zoom in on the DB logo, the Deutsche Bahn logo, we can see that the B is inverted. Merklin rectified this in a later series. So this is a model of the first series produced for the 1986-87 catalogue. The undercarriage is in good shape. It's in a bit of track, but that's okay. I prefer that to a brand new one, to be honest. It's less work. The roof is in very good shape. Nothing broken, nothing bent. Yeah, can't complain on that side. So, not uh, perfect, but not bad either. And let's move on to the box set. The box itself is a bit tatty, it must have been stored at the bottom of a pile of other sets for a very long time. Let's see if the box did its job though. So we'll take the uh, cover out and yes everything looks to be intact. The plastic tray uh, is still complete and so is the plastic cover which is very good considering these plastics are very brittle with age. Uh, the VHS tape is included with the set. Hooray! I don't have a video player or recorder to have a look at it but 
that means the item is complete. I can't see any paperwork and apart from that it was a package as well not really well to be honest this bubble wrap on top of a brittle plastic tray that's generally not doing much to uh, ensure that the item arrives safely at destination so let's get everything out and have a quick look first of all the videotape is definitely there a few minutes of Deutsche Bahn marketing material wonderful and here is the locomotive covered in this sea of salmon type red uh, the paint is okay-ish uh, there's already a little problem you can see on the roof with one of the um, electric wires which is bent underneath everything looks in order uh, the train has definitely seen some tracks so someone must have liked the uh, color scheme uh, in its previous life but everything's there so that's good moving to the roof the pantographs have moved a bit but that's okay it's just a matter of screwing them back in place but they're intact there's a couple of rust points here and there yeah well nothing too major and on to the wagons or the coaches here's the luggage car uh, it's got a few blemishes here and there here we have the city van car which is a commuter car uh, that looks okay we have the FD which is an inter-regional original car that is also in more or less good shape but the roof has got a few blemishes on this one I'm not showing everything that's because I'd like to keep this as short as possible and we've got the intercity car yes that's also in good shape so these two uh, acquisitions were okay-ish for me they're just gap fillers uh, just something I needed to complete an area of the collection but I wasn't particularly interested in those models even technically the models are the most basic uh, type of locomotives for example that Merklin produced at the time there's nothing special in them for the 3172 I happen to have all the cars it's supposed to pull in the collection as well so if there was a time where I had a gap to fill on the layout for a running session I will certainly get the two sets out and reenact my little Ockenheim somewhere on my layout probably but it's not gonna happen that soon and if you've made it that far you might be wondering what the Deutsche Bundesbahn board decided well in the end they sent both agencies back to the drawing board and asked them to work together on a third study so none of the studies presented at Hockenheim made it to production well we've reached the end thank you uh, very much for watching it's very much appreciated thank you very much also to the uh, few among you who have subscribed to the channel it's uh, always rewarding to see that people are showing some interest uh, and it keeps me going thanks very much but for now bye and uh, until next time